Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics, just in the shed grabbing some gear for a quick afternoon session. Looks like we're going to have an absolute glass out and I'm going to parallel the edges for flathead using my favourite flathead presentation, which is the Z-Man 3-inch minnows on a TT Lures Big Eyes jig head. Alright, let's get out and get stuck into them. Alright guys, this afternoon we have knocked off work and we're just going to do a classic edge bite session. So it's the last of the run out tide and I'm basically going to just drift along the edge, flicking Z-Man 3 inch minnows, my go to flatty bait, on a 3 8 ounce 3 0 TT big eyes or on a quarter ounce 3 0 TT big eyes. And I've got a variety of colors with me as I do normally. I've got a, a light natural color, a dark dirty water color. The water's pretty dirty this afternoon and also a UV reactive fluoro -y type color. So got, got all the bases covered. So there's a couple of ways I'll fish this. I'll sit out from the edge and I'll cast back in and just work the lure back in a cast distance to the edge. So I'll sit out a cast distance and just keep casting my way along as we drift. Today, with the tide being so low, I'm trying to really get right on the edge and just see if I can spend more time casting right on the drop-off edge where they'll be. So I'm what they call paralleling the bank. I'm basically drifting and casting parallel to the bank. Caught a stack of flathead on the big eyes jig heads. I love them. They've got a brutally strong hook in them, but that big eye, I reckon, is a great strike trigger. So. I'll often fish, commonly fish the chartreuse with the red eye, especially in the shallower water. And then in the deeper water, I like the black with the glow eye. I reckon it's an excellent silhouette, plus that glow eye definitely seems to get bitten. Oh yeah, there we go. Got our flea sitting on that edge. Oh, he doesn't feel like a real big one. Oh, getting a bit bigger. So that's just working that edge, paralleling the edge with that Z-Man 3 inch minnow. It's my favorite flatty plastic. Slide him in. And he is probably dinner for Sherry, that guy. He's not, not a giant, which is good. I like to let the big, big ones go. So that didn't take too long. And we've got our flatty in the net. Yep, so that guy is comfortably probably around 43. So that's a good icebox size guy for my dinner. And then we'll see how we go from there. All right, that didn't take us too long to get our first fish. You can see here a little drain running out from the bank here. It's not massive, but sometimes those little drains push the bait out. So worth throwing a couple of casts around there, especially. Those drains push the bait out, the flatty lays in that water movement, just waiting for the bait to be brought out to him or her. As we said, sometimes it's a good idea just to sit out and cast into the edge, sit out a cast distance. Today I'm just paralleling because the water's moving fast. So if I sit out from the edge, I'm not going to get a lot of casts in an area, whereas this way I can sort of throw three casts ahead of me and cover a bit more water before I get to that area. So I'm covering more area by paralleling the bank. More productive area, more edge bite area where the fish will be sitting. When I'm flicking these 3 8 ounce heads, 3 8 3 oh, I like to fish a 2 to 4 or a 3 to 6 kilo rod. So I just think that, you know, you don't want to go too light. You want to be able to control that jig head. When I hop it, I want it to hop and I want to be able to handle a decent sized flatty or you know bycatch like trevally and jewfish and that sort of thing. So I'm fishing a two to four kilo. Seros, Akuma Seros. Great rods, excellent value for money. So two to four or three to six. I've got a two to four today, or well, three of them, all the same combo. Uh, the reel isn't a Pixor XT 20. So it's not a big reel, it's only a small reel. And I'm fishing 10 pound braid and 10 pound leader. So 10 pound braid still casts well, you know, with these larger jig heads and that sort of thing. And a 10 pound leader means that I've got a fair chance of landing the fish should I catch a nice flatty and it inhales the lure. Should be, shouldn't be biting me off too easily. 
looks really nice just up here I can see the drain pushing out yep straight in it straight in that drain straight on a fish doesn't get any better than that we called that one called the drain that feels all right to that fish you just want to get that amount of line right so that you can get that fish into the net so i'll turn the fish around and i'm going to swim the fish back into the net come on buddy turn around back into the net leaving enough line out to get that fish back to the net that's that Big Eyes 3830 in Chartreuse Red Eye and Purple Death Colour 3 inch minnows which is UV. So that's a cracker fish. Alright, nice fish. Beautiful fish. In the afternoon light. As you drift along parallel in the edge, just keep an eye on the bank for different things. So. On the bank here i can see there's kind of water pushing out there and pushing out there like that water movement is working around say weed or something so right on that point there the the water's being pushed out around the weed it's creating like a pressure point and fish will often hold in those pressure points it can be breaks in the water movement it can disorientate bait and give them an ambush point to eat bait and that sort of thing so keep an eye out for water movement pressure points eddies uh, also bait flicking, fish feeding, that sort of thing. Everything we normally look for along the edge here. So I can see it's pretty much a, a good weed edge right along here. So I just want to make sure that my plastic's on the outside edge of the weed. Just bouncing along, coming back toward me. When you're fishing an edge like this, it's all good water. You know, whether it's 30 to 50 centimetres, 50 centimetres to a metre, a metre to a metre and a half or so even dropping off the edge of the channel. But yeah, flatties will sit in all of those depths. So cast once to the, once once in, once to the, once in, once in the middle, once out. That's another nice fish. You can see I use that seven foot rod to slide that fish around the front of the kayak. I know a lot of people who've fished short yaks short rods in the yak but the trouble is you still need to be able to get that rod around the front of the kayak so i like a seven foot rod at least for fishing in the yak just to, so that we can get it around the front of the kayak and control that fish he's another nice little flatfish he'd be around that sort of just legal size again on our ruler Yep, he's around 43, 44 centimetre fish, so nice flat fish. All right, as I was saying before that fish interrupted us, when we're paralleling the edges, cast, cast, cast. So, you know, 30 to 50 centimetres fish are in there, 50 centimetres to a metre, metre to a metre and a half, or thereabouts, you know, whatever the area is that you're fishing. The th key thing is don't neglect the shallows. And don't neglect the channel edge so i'll generally you'll see me throw yep oh you'll see me throw one in shallow one in the pretty much straight in front of me and then one out to the other side to the channel edge to drop off all productive water all worth a cast you can see a lot of birds up here and a bit more water movement it looks like the mouth of another drain section so we'll definitely get a few casts in the drain But it's all got the recipe we want for a flathead, which is big flats draining into channels. Massive areas of water and bait and all that sort of thing pushing off an edge where the flathead will sit. And they're ambush predators, so they'll be there waiting to ambush the bait and also our lure. I pretty much fish edges for flathead right down the east coast and even down into South Oz using basically the same sort of technique and caught flathead, you know. Flathead are, flathead, flathead are pretty much, you're gonna, you know, in, I know in some areas they're in the deeper water, they're in the bays and all of that harbors and everything and that sort of thing. But you're probably still gonna find them on the edges if you work your way along the edges, especially if it's weed edges, you know, channel edges on the end of the run out tide. There's gotta be a fair chance there's flatties there, even, you know, right up into North Queensland. I know 
you guys up there have got plenty of other fish to target but there's some good flathead caught along the edges up there as well i just stick with that th simple three color theory which is a light natural color for the clear water and bright days a dark dirty color for the dirty water and tannin stained water and that sort of thing and then a um a fluoro color when nothing else is working and that's always panned out for me as long as i've got those three colors on board tend to catch fish and then you know something another nice one in the dirty water is that gold rush with the gold glitter in the black because that the glitter as well can be useful uh when the when the water's dirty catch that light and give you that natural fish scale flash that's that that's the beast that's done the job you can see that three inch minnows it's just a beautiful bait size it's like a hardy head or a white bait it's got that real nice tail action 10 times tough so you can catch plenty of fish on the one lure and also super soft and flexible so it really comes to life in the water oh yeah there we go nice one right on the edge oh whoa, whoa, settle down buddy it's only a little tack up he's just lipped on that chemically sharpened hook as well might be able to shake. Yep, there he goes. I might be able to just shake him off. I was going to say that. Save me messing with his spikes. Put a little bit more Procure on. Give him a hand to find the presentation. Make it look natural. And smell natural. It's a good sign. Don't even mind catching the little fellas. Because that often means you're in a productive sort of area. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So, often you'll find the flathead schooling. So today I'm just doing a big long drift. But... If you do catch a couple of fish, you can always, you know, work that area over a bit more because flathead are a schooling fish and we've often caught large numbers in a, in a small area. That's why we also let a lot of them go because it's, you know, once you find them, they are quite easy to catch in numbers. So we always just keep one or two for a feed, send the rest on their way and I'll always release the bigger ones. So for me, if anything under 60, I'll keep and I like them sort of, you know, 45 to 55. There's another fish there. Um, 45 to 55 is good sort of eating size. Once they start to get close to 60, I like to send them back because they're the ones that are going to lay tons of eggs for us. Uh, he's throwing the lure as well. They're all cooperating today. That might mean they're not hanging on to it too hard either, so... That's another smaller fish. Might just go legal. Oh, on its way. That's about half a dozen fish or so we've caught on this quick arvo session, so I can't argue with that. And we're just paralleling the edges. What you'll sometimes see when I'm fishing here, like fishing this the bottom, if I'm fishing slow, it'll often be one, two, three, and then wind up the slack. One, two, three, wind up the slack. So I'm actually hopping the lure up and then I'm winding up the slack as I bring the rod down. So I'm staying in touch with the lure, hop it up, wind it up. When I'm fishing fast like this, it'll often be hop, 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 whilst turning the reel handle, hit the bottom, hop, 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 hop. So I'm just really briefly letting it bump the bottom on the paws. Oh, there's a fish. Drilled it on the paws. <laughs> Might have been a yellow hub bike. But anyway, that's just, that's a technique that I use. So if it's, if I'm fishing slow, let that hit the bottom. If it's, if I'm fishing slow, it's one, two, three, or one, two, wind up the slack. One, two, three, wind up the slack. Let it hit the bottom. So I'm, I'm just managing the line on that, on the pause as a bite. Whereas when I'm running and gunning and fishing faster, I combine the two. So it's winding while I'm ripping, pause winding while i'm ripping pause because that lure's on the bottom faster so i'm fishing fast wind 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 pause i'm not fishing that hop 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 and then big longer pause shorter pause more movement faster covering ground hop you know one or two or three hops wind it <laughs> and there's a fish on there <laughs> so they love both retrieves there you go but yeah, if you're fishing slower, give it those hops and then the pause. If you're fishing faster, then I often wind and 
twitch at the same time and then pause for a shorter amount of time either way old mate loved it there you go buddy off you go just another little tacker oh drilled it oh, oh, oh. oh that was awesome that fish came right up behind it and just smacked it as i was about to lift it out of the water only a little fella, but that's super cool. A few brim, I think, chasing bait along the edge here. Yep, there we go. That guy's got a little bit of weight in him. Oh, he's cranky. Oh, he's cranky. Don't take me into the sun, buddy. Come back this way so we can have a good look at you. That's not a bad fish. Beautiful fish. Really heavy little fish, that one. Solid, solid sort of build. Oh, that's a big sand flathead. That is probably one of the biggest I've seen, a bar tail. You've got to have a look at this tail. This tail is beautiful. Have a look at that big, that bar tail. So that's a different type of flathead. That's not a dusky, that's a bar tail. Or we sometimes call them sand flathead, but gee, you never normally get them that big. We often just get small ones, so that fish is beautiful. Way too cool to keep that guy. Have a look at that tail. Just a really solid little fish, that's beautiful. Off you go, buddy. Just cruising straight back to the bottom. Wow, I'm super stoked with that. All right, I didn't check my leader before when that fish fell off. Not very smart of me, my leader's a bit chewed up. When I attach my jig head, I generally just tie it, fix it directly on. Um, I, don't, I don't do loop knots on jig heads. All right, come on, big eyes. I reckon this big eyes jig head's got a couple more fish left in him yet today. Brilliant fish attracting head. I love the shape of them. I love the big eye and also the, the color combinations and that you can get like that. As I was saying earlier, that black glow eye is a deep water favorite. I really love that glow eye for deep edges and stuff. And also fishing deep brown weed. And then this guy, if I'm fishing sort of shallower, it's an absolute go-to, and that's the chartreuse with the red eye. And purple death has just been a magic color in a three-inch minnows. There's something special about it. If you hit it with a torch, it's got that, with a black light, it's got that UV, like, motor oil-like belly on it with a dark purple sort of silhouette back. So I reckon it's just a real nice combination and the fish love it. Other favorites for the flatties, sexy mullet, opening night in the clear water, green lantern in the clear water, dirty water I really like, uh, gold rush. You know, there's a ton of colors in that three inch minnows. If you haven't checked it out, just suss it out because it, it is a brilliant plastic, appeals to a lot of species. And it fits really nice. Ooh, was that? I thought that was a fish, but it was a bit of bottom. Fits real nice on a 3.0 hook. So I'll fish it on a 3.0, and especially on a big eyes in quarter ounce in the shallow stuff, 3.8 in the deeper stuff. And it's just been a, yeah, consistent performer for sure. Our sun is disappearing. We're running out of time, people. Let's see if we can squeeze one more in before dark. And then we've got to head for home. With that dropping sun, is going to be a dropping temperature. And I don't want to get frozen, that's for sure. Yeah, thanks for joining me on this Arvo session, Chase some Flatties. Just a real nice, yep, there we go. Real nice, simple after work edge bite session. Whoa, come on, buddy. Just remember, parallel those edges. If you can, if you've got a real low low, like real nice low tide, just, you know, hug those edges parallel. Don't forget the in and the out water, the real shallow stuff and also that edge of that channel. And um, yeah, I hope you get stuck into a few. Paralleling the edges for a flatfish. Oh, 
and I can recommend that three inch minnows on a TT big eyes as you seen this afternoon it's definitely put some fish in the boat for me which has been fantastic what do we got here that is a solid brim that has eaten my three inch minnows so I don't fish three inch minnows for brim but that's a pretty good brim <laughs> Yeah, that is pretty wild. You gotta be happy with that. Have a look at that guy. That is a stonker. Nice brim that ate a Z Man three inch minnow. Alright, we can't finish our flathead session on a brim, can we? I don't think we can do that. We gotta finish with a flathead. Get that lure on the bottom, hop it up. Let it fall back down again. Yep, yep, there we go. Oh, a lot of bait in there where that fish was. That's a flat fish. He's going wild. Yeah, he's a long skinny fella. You know that's not the end, that's never the end. <laughs> the just one more cast kicks in. So we'll have just one more cast or three. And then we'll pack it in. What a session though, great little session. Oh, yep, there's another one. Oh, why would you want to go home, seriously? <laughs> nice little bite on this afternoon. He's a little tacker. Good fun though. He clunked it real nice and put a good bend in the rod, so that was cool. Little tiny fella. There you go, buddy. On your way. All right, we're heading back the other way. Heading for home. We've almost lost our son. Oh, yeah, straight onto a fish. That's ridiculous. That fish was pretty much laying there waiting for that one, I reckon. That's on our turn for home. We turned for home through one cast and this guy ate it he feels all right too he doesn't want to come in come around this side buddy to the net can't see real well on this side either he's in right. yep he scoffed it well and truly ate it beautifully there you go little bloke Alright folks, thanks for joining me out on the water this afternoon for a quick one after work. I think we did alright, you know, a dozen or so flathead and a brim. Not a lot of big flathead, but we got a couple of nice ones in amongst it and a couple in the box to take home for dinner as well. So, you know, if you get the opportunity to get out even just for an arvo for an hour or so, it's worth having a crack, especially when you get these winter glassy days. All the best with the fishing. Cheers. It's a good lizard. Sun's gone down, we're still going, folks. 
This is a nice one we've got on here. It's just glassed out beautifully. Love a winter glass out. This is a nice fish. In the net. That's a mid 50s. That's a beautiful fish. Solid, solid fish. Very healthy condition fish. There you go. Silhouette. Late afternoon floody. Oh, what a cracker silhouette. <laughs> Fish on. <laughs> going for a slow ride folks this is how you want to end the day I, this, I don't know if this is a flatty if it is it's a good one otherwise it might be a trev it's cranky might be a trev maybe it's pretty angry it's putting a fair bit of stick on me That is a great flathead. Another nice one. Not giant, but a uh, healthy fish. Look at that thing. Fish on, that's awesome. So that's flatty number 20. That's a good one to, good one to finish. He doesn't want to give me my Z-Man back. Come on, buddy. Give us back that Z-Man. See you later, mate. He's away. Beautiful. Oh, we've got to call it at that, I think, don't we? I know we keep saying that's it, but that's it, folks. <laughs> We're tapping out. Uh, what, a, what an afternoon. What an amazing afternoon. Get out there. Make the most of these winter glass outs. I'll see you on the water. <laughs>